Alright everybody, here's the video I promised. Here is my fossil collection. I've spent uh, as much time on it as I can with the information I can to try and identify all this stuff. I wanted to throw some extra stuff in the video too, some tips that I have even though I'm just a pretty much a beginner. I've got less than a year in collecting. So let's get straight to it. I've got first thing we have some examples of favisots or favisots also again I'm sorry my accent probably makes me mispronounce a lot of this stuff but uh, I am from Tennessee so bear with me uh, this has been mineralized I believe it's a uh, calcite I want to say um, not a hundred percent that all of this is the same species uh, this piece whoop, where's my finger right there may be something different Let's pick it up and show you. I'm not 100% sure. It's very interesting. It was just laying on the ground. I found this piece actually uh, southeast of Nashville. Um, these right here, all three of these, came from a outcrop near my house. So on to the next one, we have, I believe this is a piece of uh, mineralized bryzoa, like an encrusting bryzoa, but I'm not 100%. Pretty wild. Let's pick it up and get you a side view. You can maybe see. I'll try not to shake the camera to death. Yeah, it's pretty wild. All right, we have some more Brazoa. This guy, I think he's got like a let's see, crownoid stem. I'm not sure what is going on there. Um, let's see this piece right here pretty certain is some sort of bryzoa as well as this piece I have some Herbertella brachiopods this piece has had a paraloid put on it you can see how it brought out the color in its shell it's a very very pretty specimen I actually found this one near where I found the coral uh, this is specimens without paraloid I haven't really cleaned a lot of these either a lot of these are as I found them this, I believe, is a, uh, hmm, I mean, I know it's a gastropod. I'm not 100%. All the books that I've got uh, have okay pictures. There's just not enough of this one for me to feel confident saying for sure, but I want to say Lophospira. Hmm, I probably said that wrong too. Lophospira. Well, I'm not going to do that again. That was terrible. Okay, so next we have some concretions. This is from about an hour west of my house. You can see all of the uh, little crownoid pieces in there. It's pretty wild. I'll uh, get some pictures of it from the handheld microscope to show you at the end of the video. I'm going to figure out how to take the pictures and work them into the end of the video. This is from St. Augustine, Florida. This washed up on the beach uh, during our honeymoon. Mine and my wife went to St. Augustine and there was a hurricane, imagine that, last year, and uh, that washed up. I believe these, I've, this is one of those I'm really not sure about. This was on one of my uh, road cut videos. I think this one was found far before that on one of my first trips. You can see it's kind of cracked and it's, it's infilled. I want to say that these are uh, either a crinoid holdfast or something called mammalins, melons. Shoot, beats me how to say that. I don't know. I just read the word in a book. Um, here we have some crinoid imprints, and I believe both pieces are sandstone. We can flip this one here, and you got some more. You can see how the you can see where the plates were individually stacked. That's pretty cool. Right here, this is pretty cool. This is uh, some sort of uh, like fenestrella or it's almost like a fern, it looks like. Let's see. Fenestrate, I'm sorry, I was just checking my notes. Um, this is a leptaina. I don't have the whole shell. Uh, I've only found bits and pieces of these. These seem to be pretty hard to find. I'm not a hundred percent why. 
it must have been yummy to eat or something. So here is two examples of what I believe to be Saclanema, a gastropod. Uh, here is two examples of Platystrophia ponderosa. This one uh, is in pretty rough shape, but I, I just like how crazy it looks. Look at his little, uh, let's see what side is it? Yeah. Which one? I think it's this one. Yeah, it's got little teeth. That's pretty wild. Looks like it does. Looks like the little uh, things that were on the chain that would run around in uh, Mario, the chomps, or whatever they're called. Here we have a trilobot I found the other day. I believe that is a leg or some kind of a hmm, appendage. There's a, you can see it, one of his calcite eyes. The other one, it's there, but it's really dirty. Kind of like this one. They're both um, one eye crystallized and very pretty to look at. The other one's kind of covered up. I've tried to clean this one up, but this one and the other one are both so fragile that I'm just really scared to do anything more. You can kind of see his compound eyes, all the individual lenses there. Sorry, if it goes out of focus, I'm having to re-tap to focus to maintain as good a focus as possible on all of these individual fossils. These are different examples of crinoid stems. These were uh, kind of an ancestor to sea lilies. This little guy, uh, let's see what his name was. I want to say possibly Stegorontus. Stegorontus. I'm not sure I'm saying that right either. It's really not focusing very well on it either. It's very small. Uh, here is Trigonerentia tennesseensis. <laughs> Butchered that. Or Eospirifer. Eospirifer. Hmm. Blah, blah, blah. They're pretty. They kind of look like the. Uh, these guys, the Ponderosa. Uh, let's see. I believe this one is Maristella Laivis. Laivis? I'm not sure. My Latin. Hmm. It's a good thing I don't have to speak it. Here's a very interesting one. So, this one is, I believe, if it'll focus, Dawson Ser. Dawsonoceros americanum. This is a uh, a squid <laughs> with a wizard hat. A piece of his shell. He lived inside of a long tapered shell. The end of it is uh, not this end. It's this end. Yet again, mineralized into calcite. It's very interesting. I found a piece of that on one of my road cut trips the other day that was a little bit bigger and I didn't know what it was and so I didn't keep it but now I kind of wish I did this guy is either a proto Keonoceros or an Orthoceros uh, there's a book God to Tennessee Fossils by a guy with the last name of Keys I'm using that uh, some print offs I've found of uh, geological surveys stuff like that so if I misidentify anything it's just I don't know. That's the best I got. This is uh, obviously one of the more easily identifiable types of coral, horn coral. Very small examples, about the size of my thumbnail. Here we have a mystery shell. Looks like you got, <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's uh, pretty wild, whatever's going on with this shell. Here we have a platystoma snail. I haven't cleaned him at all. This is the only one I've found so far. He's uh, he's in there though. Or it looks like the majority of him is. And we come to our last shell. Two shells, but they're the same thing. These are a trepa, a trapa. They're another type of brachiopod. They're very common at uh, the road cut I found the trilobots at. All right. Okay, on to the next topic of the video. 
cheap digital microscopes. If you have the ability to get one of these, I highly recommend it. It works great for small fossils like this trilobite eye, or crinoid stems, or crystals, or whatever. Whatever you want to do with it, I highly recommend one. I believe this one was about $50 from Amazon. You can look this uh, brand name up here, and I'm sure you'll find them. Highly recommend it. it. Saves to an SD card. It's got a pretty decent battery. You can take it anywhere. It's battery powered. Highly recommend. Still on the subject about microscopes, handheld ones. You can get one of these off Amazon. I think I paid $30. Uh, it also has a pretty decent charge. It's got a pretty decent uh, camera. This one actually uh, takes better pictures than this one right here. This one is a little more stable. You know, if you've ever used a microscope or a telescope or anything in your hand, it doesn't look like it's moving, but it's going like this under magnification. Ooh, it's crazy. So it's handy in the field, but not so much. Uh, if you're trying to take a super accurate photo. Here we have my journal where I keep up with all of my dig sites, shall we say, or my road cuts. I, if I can open it, I have a lot of pages I've saved off the internet and printed off of fossil identification guides and I'm mapping out the road cuts in the area. Uh, that's a script for this video. I had to write something out so that I wouldn't forget anything. I recommend taking a uh, fossil guide with you. This is a good fossil guide. It's got uh, a lot of really good stuff in it. It covers a lot of areas. It's got really good pictures. You can uh, find these on Amazon. I think I paid, uh, I don't know, 20 or 30 bucks tops. I have some more fossils. I was picking through stuff trying to find the best examples. I have like another of the uh, squid. I know that's not the correct terminology, but since I'm not sure which those are yet, uh, we'll go with squid. I have uh, this kind of, almost looks like a clamshell. I don't know what these are. I couldn't find them in any of the books, and I've only got one side of all of them. The other thing I recommend is a, a fanny pack. You can carry your handheld microscope in it, bottle of water, uh, maybe some plastic bags, and you can keep a marker so that you can when you go out, if you're going to multiple sites, you just uh, take a GPS with you or your phone because everybody has a GPS and everybody has a phone. You just uh, screenshot where you're at on Google Maps and then you can mark the site number on the bag. And you mark the site number, you just edit the screenshot with a markup and write one, two, three, or whatever. Then you have the GPS coordinates. So if you want to come back, you know exactly where you were. You can keep all that in your fanny pack. There's no sense in not being stylish. Uh, this is how I keep my paraloid. I keep it at certain mixtures. This is like a 5% a mixture inside of this spice jar here. And if I'm if I get something too uh, coated, I put it in this bowl and let it soak in a little bit of acetone and then try and get it off real quick before it damages it. You can also use uh, another method is vinegar, but it will discolor the fossils or sometimes even disintegrate them. I've had some of the coral I've put in there just disintegrate. So that's all I got for you guys. Uh, I know this isn't the most picturesque filming location here in my basement, but I wanted to do it anyways. It doesn't matter where you're at, fossils can be fun. See you guys at the next road cut video.